Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another edition of Quick Launch Live. I am Frank Data DiLorenzo here today to talk to you about being data driven and looking back at some of the basics. So we've done these for over 30 something weeks now. We have a lot of sessions, 15 minute snippets on our preferred strategies company page. You can go view on demand at any time. If you have questions on any of them, or would like any of the slides that may be presented, just reach out to me. I'm happy to, to share that information. Remember, the spirit of these 15-minute uh, segments is to really give you some tips, tricks, uh, gain some awareness around how to become better with your data, how to be data-driven, um, and some of the terminology and things that come along with that, so that you can come away better equipped to, to ask questions or uh, research for your own team how you can improve your data-driven experience. So thank you again for joining. Um, if you're with us today, please put in the comments, hello, I'm here, maybe where you're viewing from. It's always fun to see who's out there. Uh, and if you watch one of the videos on demand after the fact, just put a quick comment in there if you wouldn't mind watching now. It's just great to see that these are, are being viewed out there and, and hopefully adding value to our community. So. Without further ado, I'm going to, oh, one other comment I wanted to make, an announcement. We want to have a quick launch live next Thursday as uh, we'll have the largest contingents of our team uh, yet to go to Blueprint 4D conference uh, for Oracle and J.D. Edwards in Dallas next week. Uh, so we'll be at Blueprint 4D. If you happen to be going, please stop by booth 1009 just to say hello. I'd love to see you face to face. We don't get to do that enough these days. So Blueprint 40, 1009 is our booth. If you're attending, we'd love to see you there. Okay. So without further ado, I want to just kind of do a recap of some of the things and the concepts that we've dis discussed over the last several weeks and kind of summarize them in one 15-minute segment. We'll have next week off. And then after that, uh, hopefully a surprise guest again, but stay tuned for more. Still working on that one. Okay. So let me see who's with us in the comments. Hello, good morning, Ben. Someone from Houston, Texas in booth 1009. Glad you got it. Excellent. Okay. So let's see if we can bring this up. Perfect. Okay. So data-driven, back to basics. What do I mean by that? So reviewing some of the concepts that we've been talking about over the last 30 some odd weeks. And there we go. So you've seen a lot of these slides. I've consolidated them and condensed them to get this point across succinctly and summarize as, as uh, best I can in the time we have. So reporting of the past and still current. What I'm representing here, and, and remember for those, good morning, Jill from Houston. Thanks for joining. I'm glad you're here. Um, as many of you may, may have known, my career has been around the ERP space. I've implemented over 700 ERPs in a, a long time frame. I'm still here to uh, talk about it. And the biggest frustration we would have is we get all this data in our ERP. How do we really get our arms around it from meaningful reporting and insights? And so we would get to custom writing reports. And I mean, up to hundreds of reports. Uh, this is with various ERPs I've worked with over the last 30 years. But custom reports upon custom reports. And it doesn't matter the tool. It could be Excel extracts, exports, it could be crystal reports. Many folks are familiar with that tool, Microsoft SSRS, or guess what, folks? Even the new and exciting tool, Power BI. If I ask a company, are you data-driven? And they say to me, yep, we're all set. We use Power BI. That invites more of a conversation because these are the reporting tools of which Power BI falls under any of these. That is not necessarily what makes you data-driven or better able to get your arms around your data for meaningful insights. So... Enter a data model. Now you hear the term data warehouse, in memory data model. There's a Power BI premium data set, but, but this is my point, is when you take all this transactional data from your ERP, and maybe you have data in other sources. Most of us don't live in an ERP vacuum. We have data in separate CRM systems, perhaps Salesforce, uh, project management, supply chain, purchasing, inventory management, telematics for equipment. Uh, so a lot of different data sources. But if you could just magically, and it almost seems like magic, transform that data into actionable, easy to create reports, reporting data, and combine it in a way that you get a 360 degree view of your operations, it really does set you up uh, to be data driven, put you in a much better spot, and also to be able to self service some of your own reporting needs. Uh, I know a lot of folks are really thirsty for that ability. Now, 
any Excel reports or Power BI reports, great tool for visualization, we'll touch on that, or paginated reports, which is the evolved version of SQL reporting services, will be able to be leveraged off that data model. So in other words, if I have a calculation of formula, maybe it's a, a, a productivity rate to date or job cost at complete, whatever that measure, I set it up one time in my corporate data library, if you will, and then any tool that calls that measure is going to be calling the correct measure because it's coming from our one, one governed secure data source. So that's key. So that data model. Otherwise, you kind of in this scenario where custom reports out of the ERP directly or Crystal, as I mentioned, Excel is the magic glue, magic in air quotes that I see uh, often, too often with siloed information. I think many of us live that. When I speak and I ask how many people do a lot of their reporting in Excel, it's almost a rhetorical question. Is there a limit as to how many data sources can be pulled into that blue cube? Uh, not a limit that I've reached, no. Now, if it's set up properly, it's a great question. Uh, and you can map data, uh, script data from these other sources. Uh, there should virtually be no limit. You want to watch your data volumes. You get up to millions or billions of rows of data. You need to manage that properly infrastructure-wise, but uh, no known limit. So great question. So when I say this, back to here, when I say Power BI, if you use Power BI directly, you can do that. It's a fantastic tool. Go download the desktop. Start creating reports for free. Uh, but what's going to hamstring you is when you look at your data and can't make sense of it or not sure how to, how to, how to accumulate it, how to summarize it, say for fiscal period or month to date or any time measure, uh, that becomes very tricky. And more importantly, I create a Power BI report. It's its own mini little blue cube, if you will, data set. So I get 10 reports, I get 10 of those that now I'm managing and watching out for and securing and so forth. This is really what we're after. And I want to talk about this just for a moment. So module measures dimensions. Let's break that down. In your ERP, you probably have a general ledger, AP, AR module equipment. In this case, job costs, manufacturing, sales. That is all of the representative data in your ERP modules. Could obviously be other data sources as well as we just mentioned. Over here is how you want to measure that data. You want to look at it by as of a date, last 12, uh, rolling period, month to date, gross profit, uh, revenue, and so forth. So that's all the measures you want to see with your data, how you want to uh, report on it and gain insights. But over here is how you want to slice and dice it, maybe by account, GL account, customer or vendor, supplier, change order, business unit, calendar is a big one. So having everything in one cube, you can imagine how much easier it is to create reports that pull data from these modules, present it with these measures, and slice and dice it by these dimensions. So this is really ultimately what we're after. Now, you have two choices. You can build this yourself, uh, which is hard. Uh, that's why it's all we do as a company for 21 years. Uh, uh, or you can buy, depending on your options if somebody has already done this work for you. So my suggestion, humble suggestion here is if somebody's already done this, built it, the hard work, you should at least look at it, educate yourselves on what value it might bring your team and the time to value for build versus buy. Build is in years, uh, buy is in weeks. So something just to consider. And here's just something. Here's a dashboard that was created out of an Oracle database uh, with the raw data. So let's look at this. All the joins between tables must be created manually. No support for decimals. In this particular database, there's no decimals. So you have to convert the numerals to decimals, extra work. This is a biggie across any system. Data refresh rates lead to poor experience. How often do you run a report and you see it spinning and you go off to do something else, come back and it's still spinning. So refresh and uh, refresh rates and performance matters. Field names, let's take a look. When I open up the database, there's the names I'm trying to write the report from. Very uh, difficult to translate and confusing to filter all of this data. Now, and lack of measures mean you're writing formulas pretty much at report creation time. Formulas, measures. Uh, have I ever heard of anyone trying to build this themselves? That's a great question. Yes. Uh, we've got a few customers that uh, their stories are wonderful. Happy to share them. But they spent 12 months, 18 months, got maybe one module built wave the white flag, 
and then came and looked at, um, we happen to have a data model pre-built for JD Edwards, Viewpoint Vista, NetSuite. So those clients would come and look. And honestly, our best customers are ones that have gone through that difficult build experience, really learned a lot of lessons and eagerly come and implement, uh, you know, already well-vetted uh, pre-designed model and take it from there. Um, I think part of our mission in this education and awareness is maybe save you from going through that 12 to 18 month exercise if, if we can. So great question. Thank you. Coming back to here now. All joins, if you have a well vetted data model, all the joins are already created. Numerals are correct and converted. Refresh is far better optimized. That statement doesn't even do it justice. The performance is markedly uh, improved. But this is one of the biggest here. Field names, user-friendly filtering. Now I can read these field names. I know what those mean. Uh, I can easily use these filters. So something much easier to work with. When I say it's hard to build, here's your tools. So that's the fun part. Yeah, I have Power BI and I'm doing all kinds of cool visualizations. However, what makes it go is the bulk of uh, under the water, if you will, that you don't see. This is the hard part to build. And this is what firms, like in our case, preferred strategies, this is all we do, this is what we do. So once you have this built, this becomes fantastic and you can unlock the power of all those tools. And for example, uh, do it yourself. And we have several ROI examples. I won't spend a lot of time on this, but if you want these slides, like I said, happy to share. But here's an example of the steps you need to go through to build in the kind of uh, dollar magnitude you're looking at, as well as time magnitude. So build versus buy. And then really quickly, just to refresh your Power BI, download the desktop for free, publish to the service, and definitely use the, the mobile app. I mean, if you want to take your data wherever you go, I've got it now where half the time I'm looking at my Apple Watch, I'm not looking at the time. I'm looking at live KPIs coming from my JD Edwards or Viewpoint NetSuite database. And it's easy to do because the data has been laid out that way. So some cool features that you can do there. Last thing, strategic data st strategy continuum. All this means is if you look at this, where do you sit? Do you data aware? You, you're aware of data, but there's no standardization, no integration between systems. You don't trust it. Data proficient. Maybe you have a warehouse, but there's missing pieces. Data savvy. You're there. You're getting there but some kinks to work out between business and IT for reliable data on demand. And then the top of the chain being data driven. This is what journey we take our clients on and we wanna help educate you on as well. IT and business are well aligned. The data source integration is complete. You trust the data, now you're visualizing the data and making impactful decisions at the speed of light, which is how fast this stuff moves. Okay, I've got two minutes left. So I just wanted to pop into a quick example I had more examples, but uh, as usual, I, I, I spoke a little too much probably. So, but let's jump in. So here's an example of creating something off that wonderfully transformed data. This is just one of the reports or corporate dashboards that I can create. Now, let's say I'm looking at this and perhaps my AP discount, I'm a little curious about that. So I wanna take a look. That dashboard had elements across all of our operational areas, sales, AP, GL, and so forth. But then I can drill into one. So now I'm diving deeper into AP. This is cool. I wanna leverage some AI, get some visibility into my data, maybe something I didn't think of. So when I hit get insights here on AP on my discounts, it's going to give me some food for thought. It's gonna read the data. And when I stop at an insight, it's going to show me what part of the data elements it's referring to with insights, number of invoices. So this can be really helpful. Um, and as you know, what makes this go, because I've said this on many of these, and if it's your first time, I apologize, but what really makes this go is the ability to easily understand, read, and select my data with a calendar that overrides, that sits over all the data. So I can pull in all my data elements and say, when I look at it by month to date, year to date, or fiscal period, no formulas, just put that slicer on the, on the canvas. So everything's in one spot. That's what really makes this powerful is this piece. The tool is cool. This is what makes the tool really powerful. Let's see if we had any other questions. Nope, so far so good. We've got one more minute. So there's more I wanted to go through here with you, honestly, but we will be um, out of time. The only other thing I will mention is the ability to drill to the details. When in doubt, drill it out because you want to know 
Can I trust that number? So often my clients are looking at an Excel spreadsheet. It has a $2 million number on it. They have no idea if it's right. They run back and run history reports to validate it. Well, guess what? There's the number and it has every bit of detail that makes it up, drilled down to quickly and efficiently. That is one of the many capabilities. Well, folks, that went too fast. I had more I want to show because I love doing this stuff, as does our entire team. But I'm going to wrap up committing to our 15 minutes. Again, I'm Frank Data DiLorenzo. If you have any questions or want to talk about data in any way, uh, certainly reach out to me. But if you reach out to anybody on the Preferred Strategies team, we're all eager to help. Again, this is what we do. We're really laser focused on the business intelligence and data space. Uh, so thank you for being here. Again, next week we'll be off. Look for some exciting sessions coming the following week and going forward. Thank you again, everybody. Be data aware. Get data driven. Have a fantastic Thursday. Bye now.